After disappointing the little kitties with Mario is Missing, Rackle Entertainment and Software Toolworks released a follow-up called Mario's Time Machine. This time around, you actually get to be our plucky plumber. When I covered Mim, I pretty much melded the three versions together. Here, we're going to look at each one individually. Let's kick you things off with the, the NES Robies version. The Bowser has started a museum using relics from world history, stolen via time machine. Mario and Yoshi show up to stop him, but Yoshi runs ahead and gets caught. Thus, Mario is given another objective. You choose from seven doors in the museum. When you enter one, you go into a recreation of Mario Brothers, or rather an imperfect one. Here you take out the Koopa Troopas in order to get an artifact. When you attain it, get in the time machine, pick a year, and begin the time jump. When you reach a time period, you'll find that the developers made more of an effort to emulate a 2D Mario platformer. Only three varieties of enemies show up. Your standard Koopas, Hammer Brothers that don't throw their weapons, and jumping Koopa onions. The enemies still can't kill you, but they'll stun you if you touch them, though. Make sure the artifact gets to the right year and correct location when you return it. Otherwise, you have to do it over. You can also find out information from these eye blocks, but for some reason you can't move for a second once the window closes. Once all the items are returned, you have to take a short test before you fight Bowser. Speaking of which, that fight's just the NES Mario was missing final boss with better graphics. And that's NES Mario's time machine. Next! Unlike the NES version, the Save Yoshi subplot is nowhere to be seen, but the Bowser stealing artifacts premise, though, remains intact. Upon starting, you get to make a selection of which artifact you have to return. The selection is made with the X button. Not totally obscure, but still not anyone's first choice. Time travel this time around has become much more complex. In addition to manually setting the year, you have to identify the place you're going to and specify if it's BC or AD. After that, you go into a surfing minigame where you have to collect 10 mushrooms. When you meet your quota, enter a whirlpool and you'll go to your destination. If you succeed before the counter hits zero, extra seconds will be added to the timer. Once you're in the past, don't think you'd just give the artifact away once you're there. The historical guys will just shoo you away. You see, every time you get an item, you get worksheets to fill out. Only after you've filled in the blinds will they magically accept your relic. I don't know if anyone's noticed this, but every time an item goes back to its owner, there's a background animation. The game has three outcomes, two bad endings and a good one. The first occurs if you take too long returning the items. Bowser escapes in his own time machine, goes to the beach, and you're told to replay. The second occurs if you play it fast enough but all the items are returned in the wrong order. That means in order to get the good ending, you need to return the artifacts from left to right on all three floors. If you want to win, you have to play it linearly, unlike its predecessor, where you can go in any order you want. Now I think about it, in the older Sonic games, you have to collect all the Chaos symbols in order to get the real ending. This mechanic was also optional and linear to some extent. But why do they get a pass and not Mario's Time Machine? Perhaps it's because those games were meant to be fun rather than educational. As a result, there was more satisfaction in looking for them. 
I wish I had the perk of going supersonic. Even though a dinosaur steps on Bowser in the real landing, the whole thing ultimately feels hollow. Also, if that ending is achieved by returning the items in order, shouldn't you be seeing Plato before Newton? But maybe I'm just nitpicking here. There's really nothing more to say about this version. The versions on home computers are ones that I have little knowledge of. From what gameplay I can track down, they seem to meld the SNES version with the point-and-click computer versions of Mario is missing. You set the time machine manually, take down Koopas for tokens, and fill in the blanks. The surfing minigame makes a comeback as well. Yoshi is nowhere to be seen, and the SNES endings are brought over. The deluxe version is something I want to mention real quickly, because the second disc has a cameo by Bowser's Mumsy. Hello, I'm Bowser's mother. Welcome to a wonderful world of history, my child. My son Bowser has been spending a lot of time here lately. Objectively speaking, the NES version is the best of the three. Even then, it's only a marginal improvement. It's not a total loss. I mean, look at all the new Mario characters that came out of this game. Luke von Beethoven, Joan of Arc, Evan Haley, Aristotle, Julius Caesar, Raphael, Neil Armstrong, The Samurai, Sir Francis Drake, 